Hi, my name is Vivom from OpenGL Hub also. And I have like a, a little bit of cryptic name using Grass, Saga, and Wagbox tool to map global high resolution land relief parameterization. Adopting the EcoSAM projection system is kind, kind of like too long to construct when I kind of this name and I didn't really think that much. But I will break down for you in the small pieces so that you can understand. Um, does everyone here not using QGIS? Oh, yeah, okay, few people are using QGIS. It's cool, yeah, yeah. Um, and anyone heard about white box tool Saga and Grass? Uh, white box tool? No. Uh, Saga? Yeah, yeah, okay. Gra grass, I think, and most of the people who, who heard about sa sa uh, Grass. Um, yeah, that's a good start, like a um, small survey about uh, the expectation for this workshop. So today we will use QGIS, integrate with these tools to try to map these uh, terrain parameters, land ready parameters. And let's just first start with why we need these uh, parameters to, to exist, why we need this in the EO town test, why we need this for our Earth, um, for our, uh, Earth system modeling that everyone is doing here. So uh, there's a lot of um, knowledge, not only, uh, like for example, you, if you want to uh, tackle the soil, soil or the water, is not only come from the sky, but also come from the, the process of the earth, the, the gravity, the, the movement of the soil, the, um, the, the gravity that trigger this uh, land changes, or even like the continental um, movement that have the impact of our soil property and also uh, on impact on the precipitation, for example, that you have a high altitude, you will, well, you will expect to have like a, a temperature decrease and a more precipitation. So this is why we bring this um, land relief parameters into our uh, Earth observation modeling because it adds more knowledge to, 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 to models, not only um, um, but the thing that you can see from the optical sensor, but also uh, more complex um, properties that, so this is why we, we, we bring this in. So for example, in OpenGeoHub, we use, um, for example, uh, this is the uh, soil, soil mapping uh, framework. We use main, mainly this uh, uh, biophysical indexes and climate, uh, bioclimate chemical variables and also this digital surface and, uh, surface and terrain model data that give another part of the information for our Earth system. It's one of the pieces that to, to interpret our Earth system. And this is like um, a very nice uh, notebook Tom created to explain that why we use the framework. And to use, to, to, to actually generate this land relief parameters, only we need mainly is the um, uh, digital elevation map to tell it what is the alt what is the surface looks like. And there's a pretty nice um, open website, it's called Open Topographic. They provide only um, open data. And you can go to the catalog, there's the stack catalog, you can download the data and you can also uh, define the, the bonding box for your data and download this um, every piece of the different sources of uh, digital elevation map from also the LiDAR data from this website. And what we talk about high resolution is my topic. High resolution right now in the open data, uh, I, I know that the, uh, people might use uh, uh, the word DDM from uh, L the DLR, that is five meter, but it's not open. And so when we, when we see this open data, we, we, see, we um, find online or we, we, we we get all those information from different sources, for example, a, Jap a Japanese uh, space agency, a European space agency, or NASA. They have mostly the, the final resolution is 30 meter or one arc sec uh, second DTMs that we can find. And to summarize how big is this, 30 meter for the whole world, um, it's in the projection system, like uh, 4326, like WGS84. And it's a lot of, it's a bit like uh, zero, 0 0.68 trillion of pixels that, that this amount of data we will use as an input to model high resolution global parameters. So that is just the, the pictures that how many pixels we have to process to, to get all these um, parameters out. 
And things like a lot of sources, like um, uh, we are kind of don't know which one is the better, but, but in Open Geohub, we ensemble everything. So we also ensemble different sources of the digital elevation model. And we, uh, we kind of like um, generate the first version, that, but I'm working on the second version, the assembled digital uh, terrain model. Like we, we, are, we have like small polls about this, and the data can be uh, downloaded, it's fully open. So we use this uh, multiple sources of the digital uh, service, digital, digital elevation models, and we uh, assemble into one that we will use in our um, in, in my showcase for this section. But mainly to just to show that this is we we have um, working on this, and this is like the first fully open digital terrain model. And we also already de derive. Uh, the Europe, Europe, Europe land relief parameters for uh, in 30 meter for soil data cube that uh, we use to map soil type and also soil harbor density, and we derive uh, several parameters and we put already put it on the nodal. It's um, it's also you can download from there and it's not only 30 meter but we also we also do um, um, uh, Gaussian pyramid to generate multi scale data that you can. Um, use that to, for, uh, yeah. You can use that, for example, to to see that uh, in different scale of the terrain. For example, this one is the topographic wetness index. You can see this different resolution of the data provide different information in the in the multi scale that add, add in, have an added value for mapping the uh, land process. It's not only like the finer is the best, but also the, the, the courses also have adding value to, to um, land surface modeling. And this is the, one of the figures uh, for, for, for soil type mapping to, 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 to demonstrate the, the effect of scaling. Yeah. And recently, we have also produced this um, uh, global land relief parameter, a few of them. In the global scale, this is so the, the, the GIF that show that we can uh, go into my country. Uh, yeah, you can see this uh, uh, different scale of the land relief parameter in the different resolution scale. And why we are doing this and uh, how does it mean to the uh, scientific community? What is our contribution? We have been um, like working to break through the, the current uh, limitation for because it's the current limitation of this existing data set, for example, the Giuseppe uh, published a paper in 2020 about the uh, geomorphism 90, 90 meter and also hydrology 90 meter. But we wanted to break through to 30 meters so that we can support another, uh, high, another property in the higher resolution. So this is the, the main objective that here, we, why we produce this then relief parameters data. And yeah, this is, Quite a like a show uh, presentation is kind of light, and then we go to some hands-on, and I will do it more like a showcase because I know everyone is a bit uh, tired. This the last session, so I will sh I will demonstrate how I do it, and this video will will, will be recorded, and you can practice uh, at home if you want. But uh, I will show you. So first, we have some uh, already have like a, uh, an ensemble digital terrain model online on the Nodo and also on S3 that you can just copy the link and I already have those open in my, I have already have two tile in the, um, in my QGIS. So this is the tile, it's, um, it's in Austria and Hungary and uh, Slovak, Slovakia. So this is the, uh, the, the tile we're gonna use today. There are two tiles and the method we are using, well, involve we to to install this software so i think it's also good to show to show that how to install this in the uh, qgis and first grass as you know the grass actually is already in uh, qgis so you don't have to install and for saga you have to go to the plugin yeah I'm fetching uh, this one I mean, I can just reinstall it again. Yep, and then you have that, but 
Uh, in Sagat, you first have to install uh, install the plugin, but you have to also need a binary um, package in your terminal. So I also have the code here, so you can install this. It's mainly for uh, um, Linux system. I don't know which kind of uh, OS system you guys are using, but I think it will, will be easier than, than Linux. And, and there are some, um, I also put this um, link here, so you can go here to check if you have the different system. But in Linux, mainly you only need to um, install the plugin, and then you, um, uh, you, do, you install the package in, in the through your terminal. And then we can try to use the grass to process something. So let's do um, geomorphform. Um, so uh, I have two tiles, so I can just uh, run some grass right now. And it will process from one of the DTM tile and generate, oh, mm -mm, wait. Maybe I have too much, too many windows. <laughs> yeah, no worries. So you can see this um, uh, geomorphism index. Um, like this, and what is this? That's search. More. So I, I need to first search first, but uh, it's the kind of like param parameters to define what kind of uh, length class uh, it is. In yeah, it's basically to to see as the uh, length class for uh, in the um, in a digital terrain contest that to to see like if you have like a left right uh, from back or taller you or you're in the pit basically like that so I run this uh, for one tile and I will also run another tile. Oh, mm -mm. In the meanwhile, I can change the name. It's, it's a bit slow. Just have to wait it for a bit. Okay. Now I have this. And geomorphy. Here, here is the layer, and as you see, I have like some overlay, overlap in this uh, tile. That is the um, why we use that because um, um, uh, we are using this kind of tile base. Processing for a global mapping. If you do like a local mapping, you might not notice that uh, when you generate a tile, if you if you generate the whole region, you can run feeding your your ROM. It's no problem. That's but if you try to ROM the whole uh, continental scale or like the global scale, you cannot you cannot read in the whole um, image into your processor it will over, overload because it is it's close to a trillion pixels, so you can't really run in. And that, in that sense, you have to tile into the small pieces and process in that way. 
And we're using this um, overlapping strategy to actually um, eliminate the border effect. Let's, I will show you here if you go, so this is like the um, tile. Okay, it's, it's covered, but this is the tile. When you go to the border of the tile, I don't know if you can see, but uh, let's go closer. You can see like A and B, they actually um, process the same thing, but they give a little bit different result because uh, in this uh, geomorphism process, it's the uh, line to sign process. So they will search the pixel uh, with the iron side, if you like the same elevation, they will keep searching to until they reach the gain or loss of the ter terrain height in order to uh, run the algorithm. So it's actually involved into the nearing pixel. So that is why um, in the edge of the tile, it could have a slightly different value. And they will create the inconsistent when you do the tile-based process, but you try to mold that into a bigger um, tile or a global scale. So, so that is why we do the overlapping, and at, and at the end we will do um, the cropping that to reduce the tile into um, um, into an orig original size and do the mosaic. And another thing I also wanted to mention that. Um, to actually map, because I, I, I would say that, now we mar we're mapping the data not only pixel-based, but also relate to the neighboring pixel. We need to make sure that this uh, distortion of the projection system is preserved well with the angle and the area. So we're not using uh, the global projection system like uh, WGS48. Instead, we use uh, equal seven, there's like a GitHub repository. And also, uh, I think you heard the talk from the uh, Vagan about this projection system. But using this projection system, we can preserve um, the map in order to, when we run this kind of like a spatial process, it will illuminate this uh, arrow to, to generate more uh, consistent map in the bigger scale by, uh, by the sm smaller tile, um, in, by smaller tile data and aggregate to the bigger one. So this is how. Uh, we use this uh, tail bay process. So you can see that uh, now I generate this geomorphism data. And, and yeah, so basically this is what, how I do. And that's finished, well, we have finished the um, um, grass part. We can try some software from Saga. So uh, that's play it around, maybe do the um, uh, hydrologic analysis. So I will make this, uh, okay. No. I need to close it because I can't tell. I can't find Saga here, but uh, yeah, we'll be fine. Uh -uh. Yeah, because I just installed Saga, so you have to reopen your QGIS in order to make the Saga show up. So let's do the full field uh, sync. Uh, this function is to create um, a more consistent terrain that uh, the water can flow on the terrain. It's the most uh, important things when you do the hydrologic analysis. You have to make sure that the water connectivity is good because most of the digital elevation map, they have this um, sliding noise that prevent, like the pits that prevent the water to flow, uh, fl um, flow fluent in the terrain. It also, um, and it would also have the edge effect. So we also need an overlay tile to, to run this process. So let's run the uh, field sync for this data. And unfortunately, this process in, in, in the saga is quite slow. If you see the process. Um, yeah, they run in the in the parallel, but uh, 
they didn't really cannot finish in the meanwhile. And uh, during this time, I will install the uh, white box tool. So we can try also the same algorithm in white box tool because it is a little bit faster. So um, how to do the white box tool? Here, you have to download the white box tool from this link. Mm. So here's the download, and you see that here's a purchase. But if you, if you put this uh, zero donation, then you can just download. And here I show the download page, and you can download Whitebox to the Linux. But I already downloaded, so it's in here. And the next thing to do is to download the plugin. Yeah. Here is the plugin, and I, ins I already installed the plugin. And after you install the plugin, you have to go to um, uh, the option, setting option, and to point the provider of the plugin to the white box tool. So here's the pointer. You have to point uh, the, the um, package you just download into uh, QGIS, and they will be fully connected. And you can see that this, uh, um, this saga is still running. But now I can run, try to run the same process in white box tool. So it's, a, it's the same process. They come to the same name. So yeah. No, I mean, I, I would just keep it the uh, process. It's uh, because um, this algorithm, you have, if you look into the algorithm, the algorithm will search each pixel and to find all the pixels that be higher than him and then try to move up to that pixel and make the water connectivity, uh, so make, to make the water connected. So it's really take time to, to process. But in the white box, so you see the white box tool is already finished and the saga is still running. So this is the... Uh, Output from the white box tool for each, for one. Um, hydrologic connect the uh, dam. So it's, uh, yep. And after that, you can derive um, another thing, so I would I would show one tile to derive the topographic wetness index, and so it's wetness index. We can also can use uh, uh, white box tool, and this is the uh, white uh, wetness index. You need the slope also, so I need to first derive slope. So you can try slope, and here slope, and the white box to them, and then you're wrong. And you can see that white box would also parallel all the process. So it's, 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 it's pretty fast and decent. So now you have the slope. Mm. And after the slope, you can run this hydrologic analysis by here. Saga is still running. That's, I just want to show that how the how white box two can now be the speed of Saga in this in this in this case. So um, yeah, that is um, the the final result for the wetness index. Uh, okay, it's a bit. Uh, we need to change the color. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, because of the time, so I will do. Um, a summary for, oh, so this is the wetness index. So you can s really see this uh, topographic um, change for the wetness of the, the ground. And uh, except, uh, sorry for the time issue, I will conclude this result. And then we move down to the uh, closing panel. 
So, so we use this technology that over, we use this algorithm to overlapping the tile in order to make sure it's con water connective and also illuminate the edge effect. And, and then we produce the tile. And then this is a showcase that uh, we do the uh, output mosaic for the uh, Duna Basin to, for this uh, topographic wetland index we generate for the whole Europe. Um, yeah, that is the, and to conclude this presentation or this workshop, we have three points. The first thing is uh, land relief parameters are a piece of, uh, the pieces of understanding the complex earth system uh, in going something to do with the uh, uh, biophysical indexes and the climate. And Eco7 projection system here help us to uh, minimize the oversampling of the global land surface. So we use it, so uh, to run this uh, digital elevation land relief parameters using Eco7 can, uh, can eliminate the, the distortion and make the global maps possible. And we use the, the tile-based process and overlapping to run this process enable to feeding the the whole like uh, we kind of like hardware hardware limitation to run high resolution data processing so it's basically uh, the workshop for today um thanks for the attention <laughs>